Everyone knows the software engineering job market is more competitive than ever. Over the past couple of years, we've seen massive layoffs everywhere from the tech giants like Microsoft and Google to much smaller companies. Everyone's been impacted. I mean, I've just been laid off myself. I'm afraid we're going to have to let you go. Juniors are now competing with experienced engineers, outsourcing is increasing and AI is impacting everything. So does this mean it's game over? Should we all just throw in the towel and start flipping burgers at the local Mackey D's? Well, not exactly. In this video, I'm going to break down the challenges software engineers face today, why there's still hope for the future, and talk about how you can actually thrive in this rapidly evolving market. Let's try that again. And talk about how you can actually thrive in this rapidly evolving market. Let's get started. Now, the software engineering job market has been through a hell of a lot in the past few years. In 2023 alone, I think it's something like over 300,000 tech workers were laid off, and by 2024, another 130,000 jobs were cut. Of course, every time another layoff happens, the market gets flooded with more and more talent, creating this vicious death spiral. The effect is particularly being felt by junior engineers, as they now have to compete with sometimes quite frankly desperate mid-level and senior engineers who also need a job. On top of that, Companies are increasingly outsourcing jobs to lower cost regions like Latin America, India and Eastern Europe. This shift is making it even harder to secure opportunities in traditional markets. And then of course there's AI, the elephant in the room. We all know that AI tools are automating routine coding tasks at an unprecedented pace. But look, here's the thing, regardless of AI or not, back in 2021, the industry was in an unsustainable boom. I even heard of engineers juggling multiple high paying jobs and grinding leak code just to keep jumping companies for a quick pay bump. The fact is, it just couldn't last forever. And now we're in the inevitable downturn. I mean, think of other high paying professions like doctors or lawyers. It takes years of learning and training and overcoming barriers to become highly paid in those fields. But anyway, regardless of that, Remember that after every bubble comes stabilization. While many will inevitably leave the industry and average salaries will adjust, this is actually good news for those of us committed to the long term. Remember that these cycles have happened over and over and over again in the tech job market, and this time will be no different. In fact, I think there are actually a lot of reasons to be very positive on the tech market as we head into 2025. First, as absolutely brutal as it's been, we're well into the tech layoffs cycle now. Layoffs peaked in 2023 with huge numbers of jobs lost, and while 2024 did see more cuts, they've been slowing down month by month. Historically, these cycles simply have to bottom out and stabilise at some point, and this time will be no different. I firmly believe that the market will recover, it's just a matter of when. Fair enough, it might not look like it did before, but jobs will still be there. Second, let's talk about AI's impact. AI is obviously helping companies produce a lot of code very quickly, but the fact is that the code being churned out isn't anywhere near production ready. It needs to be reviewed, tested, maintained, and improved, and that requires skilled developers. Maintenance of code is typically much harder than development itself, and AI is just not suited to this yet. Once companies put code out into production and start charging money for it, they have a responsibility to keep it working if they want to continue making said money. And that will require developers. Finally, you've just got to glance at the news to see that tech companies using AI and related technologies are raising huge amounts of money right now. What does that money go toward? Sure, some of it goes to infrastructure and marketing and providing nice lunches for clients, but the huge majority of it is spent on hiring new talent and keeping that talent happy. Companies still need staff and they still need developers. Now that we've talked about the challenges and reasons to stay optimistic, let's get into the most important part of the video what you can do to stand out and thrive in the tech job market in 2025. Because while the market is competitive, there are clear steps you can take to position yourself for success. First, you simply must start thinking of yourself as a business. If you're lucky enough to already have an employer, start thinking of them as your main client. With all the tools and AI at your disposal today, you have more power than ever to create value. You simply must use it. Whether it's automating tasks, solving tough problems, or delivering results faster, you need to show that you're indispensable. Put simply, 
If you don't leverage these tools, someone else will. Second, improve your own skills, not just your coding skills, but also problem solving, system design, even soft skills like communication and teamwork. It's not enough to be good enough anymore. You need to actually get good at what you do. Whether that means getting, I don't know, a Kubernetes certification or mastering cloud architecture or whatever you're into, invest in yourself now so that when the market picks up again, you'll be ahead of the curve. Next, and I know some of you won't want to hear this, but you have to network more. Look, I get it. I'm a massive introvert and I hate talking to people in real life most of the time. But whether we like it or not, 50% of jobs get filled before they're even posted these days. People love working with people they already know and trust, and so being one of these people, you'll always have the upper hand. If you're just relying on platforms like LinkedIn where you can easy apply with just one click, guess what? It's just as easy for everyone else to do that too. In fact, it would be pretty trivial to write a script that will apply for a thousand of these jobs. Networking gives you an edge, and it's the only way you'll find these hidden opportunities before anyone else does. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, start building your personal brand. If there's one thing that Generation Z has taught me, it's that standing out is more important than ever. I don't care if it's writing blog posts, creating YouTube videos, or sharing your projects on social media. Putting yourself out there will open doors you didn't even know existed. I can personally testify to this. This is exactly what I've been doing the last few years, even before I got laid off, sharing more about my own projects and progress online. My goal is to encourage and inspire others while building my own brand along the way. Look, I truly believe we're heading increasingly towards self-entrepreneurship in tech. With the right skills, you won't need a company as a middleman anymore. Clients will hire you directly as a contractor for short-term projects, allowing both sides to avoid long-term commitments. The bottom line is this, you have more tools and opportunities at your fingertips than ever before, but it's up to you to use them. Think like a business, sharpen your skills, network effectively, and share your journey with the world. These are the steps that will set you apart in 2025. As we wrap up this video, I want you to remember one thing. Software engineering still offers incredible benefits. Location freedom, work-life balance, high salaries, the chance to work on cool and interesting projects, and a variety of opportunities. Yes, the industry is evolving. The way we find jobs and even the way we work is changing, likely in ways we can't even imagine yet. But here's the good news. If you're committed to this field, you too have the power to evolve right along with it. I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know in the comments below what your predictions are for the tech market in 2025 and what steps you're planning to take for your future. If you found this helpful, please remember to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. But that's all for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.